All right, thank you, Steve. Um, first of all, I just want to thank God for uh, just giving me an opportunity to be here and uh, allow me to share his word uh, with you guys this week. Uh, second, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is my wife, Erica. Uh, we've known each other for quite a long time. But uh, I'll get into that uh, when we uh, share this week with you guys. Um, and I just want to thank Stephen. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Stephen has worked really hard behind the scenes, uh, putting things together, activities, and you know, all these ideas. He's really excited about what's going to happen this week, and so am I. But, uh, for those of you who don't know, Stephen works hard, right? So I, if you guys could give it up for Stephen. Um, a little bit about me, uh, well, before I get into that, actually. Uh, the way this came about, uh, back in February, I made a little biography or a letter, and I sent it out to multiple camps. And uh, because I really believe that God has blessed me with the gift of like, sharing his word. And uh, this is one of the camps that I sent my letter to. And uh, I remember when Dave got back to me. You guys know Dave, right? Everybody knows Dave, right? Dave's the man. And when, when I sent it, I didn't expect a, a response back. I was just kind of sending it out because... Uh, right now, we're at a stage in life where we're in transition. For those of you who don't know what that means, you will know later in life. But um, basically, we're just trying to find out what God uh, would have for us to do. And so I sent Dave this letter, this email, and the next thing you know, Dave gets back to me. And we started talking, and he started sharing his vision and how it's been 30 years since they did a team camp, a team week. And uh, so he was excited to uh, have this week because you guys requested it. And um, so Dave got back to me, we started talking, started sharing. And it was just a, it was just a, a, a match made in heaven. I mean, uh, Dave is the man, he's, he's cool. And he approved of me being up here. So I was like, oh, thank you, you know, that's cool. But uh, we've been at Word of Life for the summer, and I served as one of the chefs on an uh, island. So instead of taking a boat, I mean, I take a boat every day to work, you know, which is kind of cool. But uh, instead of driving, I'm taking a bus, or I take a boat. I think that's cool. So we're up there serving for the summer, and uh, now I'm here. And, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm from New York City. Any New York City people in here, right? Got one. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. My wife is from New Jersey. Now she's from the uh, Bergen County. Bergen County. Yeah. And uh, so New York City, you know, suburbs of New Jersey. I think these two people meet. We'll get into that later on this week. I grew up in New York City. I grew up with two brothers. I had no sisters in my home, so, uh, but my hair was really long, so when I came out, uh, my mom actually thought I was a girl. And uh, when the doctors told her, oh, no, it's a boy, she said, no, put him back, put him back. <laughs> I, can't, I can't put me back. But um, two brothers, I'm the middle child, so anybody know anything about being a, the middle child? Oh, yeah, you got a fun part right here. Yes, and uh, we need the most attention in the house. So everywhere my mother went, uh, I went. And it, it kind of worked out in my favor and it kind of didn't because sometimes I didn't want to go nowhere. And at that time we had Sega Genesis. For those of you who don't know, Sega Genesis, only a few people. It was like a modern day uh, Xbox or PS3. Sega was the jam back in the day. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Um, so we grew up in a house and we didn't really know God, 
we never had a relationship with God, but uh, we knew God when we got around the food table because we said grief. Heavenly mm -hmm. Father, thank you for his food, Jesus' name, amen. So my mother taught us how to pray that prayer, which is kind of typical in an American household, but maybe not so much these days. Um, my mom was a single parent, so my dad was never around. And I didn't have that privilege of growing up with a, a, a dad, or somebody to call dad, uh, in, my, in my household. So my mom did the best she could. And uh, I remember when I was struggling in high school, and I didn't, you know, who likes to get up in the morning for high school? Oh, oh, mommy, leave me alone. I don't want to go with that. You know, I, I, did anybody have that struggle? You know, nobody wants to get up in the morning. Come on, be honest. And come on. You know, I see you. Thank you for being here. But uh, my, mom, my mom stayed on me. She stayed on us, my brothers. And uh, she just uh, pushed us. And next thing you know, I graduated high school. I was 21, but I did it. So, like I said, growing up, we didn't really have a relationship with God. And uh, so I didn't know any better. Uh, my mom did teach us not to smoke, you know, don't drink. Don't, don't have, uh, you know, sex outside of marriage because she would be my behind if I would do any of those things, right? So my mom didn't play any games. But um, what I want to talk about this week is we're going to, and I'm not going to spend too long here, uh, we're going to dive into the Word of God, like uh, Andrew said this week, and uh, the character that we're going to focus on is Joseph. Anybody know about Joseph? A little bit, somewhat, never heard of you. All right, well, for those of you who um, don't know about Joseph, he is 17 years old. That's right, so some of you guys. 17 years old. And uh, anybody remember how many siblings he has? Say again. Uh, 11 and a sister. So it's 12 siblings all together that he has. And uh, we're going to look at his life. We're going to look at his brother's life. We're going to look at his dad's life. And the one thing I want you guys to be thinking about as you're going through this week, I want you to ask yourself, why are you here this week? Some of you have been here all summer, and you had the opportunity to go home, but some of you decided to come back. But I really, want to, I really want you to ask yourself and to be thinking about, why am I here this week? Are you here for the activities? Are you here for the fun, laughter, and the late night pranks in the cabin? Or why, why are you here? You know, are you, are you here to hear from the Word of God? Are, are you here to see what God has to say to you? Or are you here just because your parents forced you to come here? Or you just wanted to come here because, hey, this is the only place that I can go. And this week we're going to dive in and we're going to see Joseph's life. We're, we're going to see the the dysfunction of his family, right? Anybody got a perfect family here? Didn't think so. And we're gonna see how his brothers treated him. We're gonna, we're gonna see um, how his brothers really, really, can I say this? Really hated their little brother. Hated their little brother. And we're, we're gonna dive into that this week. And uh, the first part is in, uh, for those of you who have Bibles, and uh, if you don't have a Bible, I encourage you to bring it this week because we're, we're getting in. And we're going to be very interactive. I'm going to be asking questions, and you guys are going to be giving answers. You guys are going to be sharing your input because this is going to be, it's going to be an intense week with getting in the Word of God. And this is why Team Week is being done, because of the Word of God. If there's no Word of God, there's no camp. All right. If you can have fun somewhere else, you can do anything. You 
you have fun at another camp, but this is why we're here. This is why we do Team Week, because we get a chance to hear from God outside of your normal environment. See, when I grew up in the city, uh, a little bit about me, I, I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, but one of my favorite things to do was, we yeah, had a friend named Jesse, and uh, we like to talk to girls. Okay, we, we like to get the girls' phone numbers, and that was kind of like a little game. We said, oh, man, write their phone numbers. We didn't have like cell phones back then, like iPhones, so we had to do pen and paper, you know, write their phone numbers. But um, that was our favorite thing to do. And so one day there was no girls walking by the park. I mean, no girls walking by. This is New York City. Right? Like, girls everywhere. No girls walking by. So my friend Jesse, he has this crazy idea of going to a church because there's girls there. There's girls in the church. So I said, okay, because there's nothing else to do. So we, uh, he invited me to, to this youth group that he normally goes to. Now mind you, he doesn't know the Lord. He doesn't have a relationship with the Lord. He just goes to this youth group just to get girls' phone numbers and play basketball. Right? So he's invited me to do the same thing. So he brings me along, and we, we go to church. And I, I'm 16 at the time. And uh, so we had these, uh, I used to wear these long t-shirts. But that was a thing back then. The t-shirt comes to like to your knees and <laughs> kind of look like a skirt, but you know, we thought it was the coolest thing ever, ever. So we just hey. <laughs> and we just thought he was all of that. Right? So we bring me to this church, which is my home church, by the way. And before those festivities could start, of getting girls' phone numbers, playing basketball, doing all these things. Uh, we had to sit down and listen to a gospel message. And the guy named was Ruben Rhonda, and he sat down and uh, he shared how what Jesus did for me and how he could forgive me of my sins and, and how, you know, he died on the cross of my sins, but he didn't stay dead, he came back to life three days later, and now I have a relationship with him. And when he shared that message, that night that I was supposed to go there and get girls' phone numbers, and whoever well, got the most win. That, that didn't happen that night. Um, what happened was, I wanted to give my life to the Lord at 16. New York City. Now, for those of you who never grew up in a city, it, it, it's rough. I grew up in a drug infested environment and fatherless home. And so it, it, it's, a, it's a crazy environment, but there, that's where the Lord met me. When I was 16 years old, and I gave my life to him, my friend Jesse didn't give his life to the Lord did. He gave his life a year later because when I, got, when I came to the Lord, I was at my friend Jesse's house every Sunday, knocking on his door. Come on, Jesse, let's go to church. He was like, man, what happened to you? What happened? I said, come on, man, let's go. You know, we don't want to move God. And, you know, so, so I would be in church. And I'm listening to the message. And after the message, I see Jesse walk in. Hey, Jesse, you he was here? He said, no, he was here. Now, he wasn't there. You know, he was lying to me. I would ask him anyway. He was, he was here? He goes, yeah. I said, what did the pastor talk about? Oh, the pastor talked about God. I said, of course. <laughs> right? So, but a year later, my friend gave his life to the Lord because I kept knocking on his door. He said, let's go to church, come on, let's go, let's do it. So that's when my walk with the Lord started. And for Joseph, he grew up in a house where everybody knew God. His dad especially had a relationship with God because if you look at some chapters that's further back, um, Jacob actually uh, wrestled with an angel of the Lord, which is, they say, that's the Jesus in the Old Testament, but I won't get into that. But um, Jacob has a relationship with the Lord. So Jacob is the father of these 12 children, and, and we see that their father 
All right, and this is something I never knew. This is something I missed. His father, the, the sin started with his dad because his dad showed favoritism to Joseph. All right, he did, he did this, he, this is what he did for Joseph. Watch this. Right now, now Joseph says, now Joseph dwelt in the, now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph being 17, he's a teenager, 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. He also had a work ethic, right? And Joseph worked. And the lad was with the sons of Balaam and the sons of Zelpha and, the, and his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. So Joseph was a little tattletale. Anybody got some experience with somebody tattletale, your sibling tattletale? Mommy, look at what he did! Mommy, he took me, he took the last cookie! Oh, Mommy, Mommy, guess what, Mommy? I was in school today, and I saw I, he was hanging with the bad boy. <laughs> Joseph, tattletale. Always telling on his brothers, right? Well, he's 17, right? He doesn't really know any better. So, watch this in verse 3. Now, Israel, which is Jacob, because his name got changed a few chapters before. So it's interchangeable. See the Israel of Jacob. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. Because he was the son of of his old age. He also made him a tunic of many colors. Now he's cheating his. Because Jacob is an old dude, and so for him to have a child like at 85, you know, we don't see too many old, older people having children anymore. But here, uh, Joseph is being favored by his dad. And if you know anything about favoritism, um, God really doesn't approve of that. That's, that's a sin when you treat one person better than the other person. And we see that, we see that a lot today in our culture, in our society, unfortunately. Even in some of our, some of our families. You know, sometimes I got treated uh, better than my older brother because I'm a middle child. Right now, that's not an excuse, right? So you know, but it happens. It, it happens in our in our families. So Joseph, uh, he made Joseph a coat of many colors. And this thing was special. It was nice and thick. It was colorful. It was something a royal person would wear, or a rich person that had money. So tomorrow we're going to get into the rest of this message. We're going to see what the coat means. We're going to see how the brothers responded, and we go get into the word. So be prepared to, uh, even if you want to read ahead, you can give you that permission. But be prepared to. Uh, Give you input because I'm going to be asking questions and we're going to be talking a lot to each other. And uh, we're going to pick this up tomorrow on what the code of many colors and what the our brothers responded, what that means. So I'm going to call Stephen back up to the microphone and we'll see you guys tomorrow.